Hey guys, look who's hotboxing. me and Dino in this car. Don't you wish you were with us right now? I feel like shit, you guys. I have this, like, stabbing pain in my side. I don't know what that means. My friend gets this a lot. She's got kidney problems. I don't think that's what it is, though, because this shit's happened before, where I just had this, like, constant stabbing pain, and then I ended up going to the hospital getting on that, uh, uh, what's it called? The drip. I might just have to take a shit. I really don't know. But it's like in my lower back and my side and like my abdomen. So, they keep saying that nothing's wrong with me every time I go to the doctor and I'm really tired of like spending $60 for them to tell me the same shit. Now granted, the dermatology appointment was totally worth it because I figured out that I had psoriasis and it was only $100, so that really wasn't as bad as I was expecting. However, Unless I have like a significant issue, I'm not going to the motherfucking doctor. See, I'm a hypochondriac. Doctors fucking hate us because we're constantly freaking out about stuff that's like probably not happening. And from my understanding, when I talk to doctors, they seem to have a really low opinion of the public. <laughs> probably because like, yeah, they have to deal with people like me all the time that, you know, just freak out because uh, they feel like shit sometimes. At least I don't do that with my head. I do that with my body because I'm obsessed with death, so naturally I just assume that whatever's wrong with me is bad enough to kill me, uh, but did you hear that? That was like a mini fart. It was like an itsy bitsy fart. I wish I could have like a ginormous fart because I think that would take a lot of the weight off. It's unfortunate, my lack of flatulence over here, considering the amount of bloating. So, uh, yeah, I feel like I'm on my period, but I'm not on my period. Maybe it's just a fibro, a fibro attack. Because somebody told me that I look white as a ghost. And I know that I'm already pretty white. I mean, not on the inside, but we've established this. Yeah, but I seriously, like, I don't know what I need to do. Because, like, there's no cure for fibromyalgia. You just have to deal with it, and sometimes it's worse than others. Like, I still stock my station, though. I still got, like, ten tubs of ice cream and lug them to the fucking freezer. And everyone was like, why are you still here? Shouldn't you be gone? I'm like, dude, I can't leave my station the way that it is because it looks like fucking shit. It still looks like shit. Like, I'm going to be thinking about that for the rest of the night. Like, I just took, like, a mental picture of the... It's a snapshot, by the way. That was cool. That ash just, like, flicked all over my purse. I don't give a fuck because my purse is dirty because I'm a dirty bitch. <sighs> Yeah, but, I don't know. I think it's your fucking... Your eating habits, too, haven't been that great. You've been eating a bunch of crap because you've been smoking weed. <laughs> yeah, weed makes you crave just crap. Like, all the time. Like, I bought a package of Funyuns and had to, like... talk myself out of eating the entire bag 
because, oh my god, I thought it was a cop behind me. I was like, Amy, calm down. <laughs> I just wanted to smoke a little bit of this. A little bit? You smoked a lot of it. <laughs> the Vortex saw you too. The Vortex saw how many puffs you took. I don't know if they counted, but... It was probably more than five. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Yeah, let's see. That's a good thing about having one of these motherfuckers. It like blows through the air so it circulates. It's very smart. For a stoner. It's funny how like weed is probably like the least destructive of like all the destructive drugs out there. Um, and yet it stinks the most. It lasts in your system the longest. It's blatantly obvious. Like, when, when you're high, it's it's just, there's like a look. There's like a certain, like, kind of, you know, all the different drugs have that, you know. I've, I've figured it out, you know, because I went to rehab and I also worked with a bunch of addicts. So, I know what people look like. But I definitely know the stoner look because, like, I am the stoner look and so are a lot of people I know. So... Probably should like roll the windows down. Watch all that smoke. Like that's what would happen. Your car. Everywhere. Yeah, dude. Just like start rolling the windows down, open the door, you just see like all this smoke just come billowing out. I'm such an amazing toker. It's not that hard. Lots of people can be amazing tokers. <laughs> yeah, it is fairly easy. I totally forgot what I was doing. I'm like, you're driving home, Amy. <laughs> You've gotta go home now. I'm leaving like a few hours before I was supposed to leave. I just feel bad because like, I hate leaving early. I haven't done this in a long fucking time. I used to do this all the time. Like, but it would happen a lot, like at jobs that I didn't want to be, where I would just be like, yeah, I'm fucking sick. And sometimes I would be, I would just be like, you know, trashed. <laughs> and a lot of times I get sent home because I was trashed or I just get fired. <laughs> well, oddly enough, a lot of places don't put up with that shit, you know? And they, they put up with it, but they can only put up with it for so long. Before it's like, okay. You have got to quit drinking. And sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Jesus Christ, I thought that guy was gonna hit me. Because it sounded like he was coming. <laughs> you're just high. So you're like, what's going on? You... <laughs> You've completely lost touch with reality. See, driving is so, like, second nature that I just feel like I can't not be good at this. <laughs> driving? Yeah, well, especially, like, when I'm under the influence. It's like... I'm 
extra paranoid because I know that I'm I'm high so and also my car smells like weed <laughs> yeah dude I don't know why like you are so crazy right now like you're just like I'm gonna take the scenic route I'm gonna take the scenic route so I can continue to shoot a video because I'm sick of shooting videos in the dark because I know how annoying that is so I'm sorry Vortex I should think about you more <laughs> No, but I'm going the way that I used to go to get home. And I stopped going this way because I stopped working where I was working. And it's funny, this place that I went I was actually trying to escape Steak and Shake. <laughs> and then I just ended up going right back to Steak and Shake like seven months later because I just absolutely fucking hated this other job. But I had a mental breakdown. And maybe I'm talking about this because like I just feel it coming. Another mental breakdown. This happens around the same time every year. I have a I have my yearly breakdown. Where I just feel like psychologically defeated. I experienced a lot of that though. when you want to switch lanes but you can't because somebody else is like inching forward but they're not inching forward enough for you to like get in front of them or not get in front of them you don't know what's going on <laughs> oh my god let's take the scenic route you're crazy I am crazy cheers to that cheers to being crazy if you're crazy in the vortex here here Isn't it fantastic doing whatever the fuck you want and not giving a fuck about society? <laughs> I don't know why I'm going this way. <laughs> Forest crossing? Yeah, this is this is not where we're supposed to go. Turn around now. <laughs> now! Turn around now, bitch! I'm going, I'm going! We're gonna have to wait at this light. Yeah, this is where my friend used to live. My friend that's married to my socialist professor friend, who's probably no longer my friend. And not because I cut contact with her, but I don't even think she intentionally cut contact with me. It's just what I can only assume. <laughs> right. Well, it sucks. Because, I don't know. Y'all yeah, were friends for a long time. But I don't even think it's just politics. I feel like it's, it's like everything. You're a very unconventional person. And I think after a while, like all your friends just started to drop off. They started to drop off because they, they don't want to be friends with somebody as unconventional as you. <laughs> That's okay. You shoot videos in the dark. Driving around. We're almost at 15 minutes, you guys. Isn't that exciting? We've almost reached the 15 minute mark. Holy shit. You didn't think we could do it, but we did it. Okay, I can go 55 apparently. Apparently. You like that? 
The person giving you light is the person behind me. Their fucking headlights are so motherfucking bright. <laughs> They're shining for you, Vortex. They ain't shining for me. Cause I don't want this shit. I don't give a fuck about you, Vortex. I don't care if you're uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable all the time. It's like the story of my fucking life. Just constant disarray. But it's okay though. I mean, it's not like, I don't know. I don't want to complain about it. I can never tell where, where the road starts and finishes. I don't know. Hi, darkness. <laughs> it's kind of cool though. I feel like this, this could be like part of a David Lynch miniseries. <laughs> It's like a small part of it. <laughs> Just this one specific scene where we are driving down the road and you just hear me fucking talk a bunch of gibberish per usual. But like, you don't know what's gonna happen next. <laughs> Ooh, light. You didn't expect that, did you? <laughs> We are passing by a school with uh, lights in the parking lot. Isn't that cool? It's the government. It is the government. The government. See, a lot of people say, who would build the roads? Who would take care of the schools? Shit like that. We'd figure it out, dude. You have no faith in uh, like the human race to be able to figure things out. You have faith in, in the government which is run by people, which I don't really understand. It's like, I don't get why people think that solving things on a collective basis would work. Um, I just don't think the human beings are that. Ooh, did you feel that, Fiona? I'm sorry. I know you didn't want that. That was like molestation. I'm sorry. <laughs> the road just molested Fiona's tires and she's tired of this shit you know she's been trying to tell me but she doesn't know how <laughs> she just makes this sound <laughs> I'm not laughing at kids getting molested it's fucked up you know in fact I'm trying to talk about it I'm, I'm trying to talk about it. I'm trying to bring this into the conversation so that we think about molested kids on a regular basis no, but I mean, it's so fucked up that like all these things happen. See, we're in the darkness again, you guys. We're in the darkness. We're passing a bunch of houses. A bunch of rich white people live in all these houses. I guarantee fucking see it. Maybe every so often there's like a black person that just happened to do really well and owns a business or something. Maybe they figured it out. Um, a lot of people just don't know how to do well. I don't know how the fuck I'm still alive. I don't know how the fuck like... I think a lot of people have helped me along the way. They've helped me get to where I've gotten. Um, ooh. You don't care. You don't care that Fiona gets molested every day. You know, you let it happen. I do let it happen. I'm like one of those parents that just like takes their kids to like Michael Jackson's ranch. <laughs> Drops my kid off for the night. Hey, have fun, Jimmy. I know you'll have fun. It's a ranch. It's a ranch owned by a pop star that changed races. <laughs> oh, he didn't want to do that. <laughs> he had no choice. I think most people, if they had the choice, they would want to be black. Just because it seems like, oh, it's, it's cool to be black, right? Here's the thing I realized last night. So, I told you guys, I work with a lot of black people. I hang out with them after work. Um, sometimes before work. Um, we, we get along. Sometimes we get at each other, but it's nothing neither of us can, can't handle. Um, I think white people are passive aggressive. 
and black people are just straight up aggressive but it's just funny like to watch people freak out people freak out all the time and here we are in the darkness again Okay, it's gonna cut me off pretty soon though because we've been talking for almost 30 minutes. I'm glad you just now caught that. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure that says 29. It's hard to tell the difference between a nine and a zero when looking from far away, but I'm pretty sure it's almost at 30 minutes. No, dude. Here, here, here. Wait, two more seconds. 21. You're 21 minutes. Okay, never mind. That took considerably less time than I expected. <laughs> and I'm going like a, I'm going like 40 miles an hour in like an area where I could go I think 55, but I just don't feel like going that fast right now. I wonder why. <laughs> anyway, you guys, I don't remember what I was talking about. Of course you don't. Black people. They're very rambunctious, man. Like, really loud, really dramatic. But I, I like study people all the time. And I'm like, what are the differences between black people and white people? It seems like white people are afraid to talk about their emotions. They're afraid to be crazy or act crazy. Black people don't have that problem which is why they're not targeted when it comes to psychiatric medication. Um, it's not just like, oh, black people can't afford it. They have all these generic medications now that are pretty cheap, you know. I mean, I had medication that was basically free, um, provided by the state. <laughs> they're so nice, aren't they, the state? Oh my goodness. Uh, they had like a country club, like say like the government like had a country club and like people hung out at the country club. They probably do, man. <laughs> what the fuck do you think's going on? Like what's what's really going on? Let's figure it out. There's a there's a country club that the government belongs to. It's got like that like men's association and uh Stepford. <laughs> All these weird chemicals come from the uh what's it called? Men's Association. Country Club. Oh, hey, somebody just passed me. I'm not going fast enough. I just started going 50, homie. They want to go faster. Like, if you can go faster, like, why wouldn't you? You know? That's true. Well, you might be high. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I just have to take a shit. I might just have to take a shit. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. I just feel so like... I feel so shit right now. I feel like I can't. Like, you know, sometimes that you get that feeling when your stomach hurts and you feel like you try to stick your stomach out. It, like, hurts to do that. And sometimes you'll get this, like, brief period of relief where it'll just, like, stop hurting. And then it'll just go right back to hurting. I'm not trying to make people feel sorry for me. I'm just letting you know what's going on over here. In the dark. In the dark, I'm having stabbing abdominal pains. And no, I am not on my menstrual cycle currently. I just got through with that, like, two weeks ago. And everyone's like, you're pregnant. I'm like, no, I'm not. Unless I had a Jesus baby. <laughs> yeah, man. Mary was a whore. 
I'm surprised that people just fall for that. Like, they just fall for this, like, certain ideas of people. Like, if you idealize somebody. And I think that people do that with religion, too. So they, they sort of let a lot of people get off the hook. And they do that with politics, especially if they feel like... They agree with you. They they want to agree with you on something, and they might not, but they pretend to because they're like you guys are in the same political affiliation. So that means that you agree with each other. You like have to go along with their bullshit, even if it's like terrible and. Like the stuff, the stuff that <laughs> the stuff that people like will go along with in order to like pretend that you know they're this identity or that identity. It's like it's all this obsession with self. It's totally narcissistic and it's also completely counterproductive and counterintuitive to like. what these people think that they want and nobody's happier nobody's like I don't think anybody's satisfied with like anything that they have is it this bad in other countries if you're watching this in any country other than America is it bad in other countries too like do people just not appreciate shit people just want to be numb to everything. I mean, I, I, I don't think it's just an American thing. I think this is like clearly a problem with, you know, technology. People just want they want a very like carefree life. But then they want all of the uh, what do you call it? Um, <laughs> rewards, right? They want all the rewards for like hard work and diligence and all that when they're not hardworking or nor diligent. So it's like they want all that shit. But that's, that's ridiculous because it's like, even if they had it, like if you just get something handed to you, you're not gonna appreciate it anywhere near as much as if like you worked for it, you know? Like, that's why people that just have like an inheritance or they just like get shit handed to them on a silver spoon, it doesn't, it doesn't help them. Like, rich people are, <laughs> are I think they're even more miserable. Than, than poor people and I also think that that's why a lot of rich people like claim to be socialists because like they they resent they resent having money because they're not any happier so they think that money is the problem like as the people that make money that's the problem I get it I mean I hate money too man I hate money as much as Karl Marx thought that he hated money but I'm also like very hippie. I don't want to call myself like a rugged individualist or anything like that, but I know that I'm more woo. <laughs> Sorry, Fiona. Yes, you were a bad car mommy slash daddy. <laughs> I am. Um, Fiona's mad at me. <laughs> she knows you didn't mean it. She knows that if you could go back in time. <laughs> every time that I do this, every time that I veer a little too closely to the right, <laughs> have a problem with that anyway. <laughs> I really do. I really 
it too. See, that was well timed. It's gonna cut me off in 33 minutes. Just letting y'all know. I was thinking about going somewhere, but I don't remember where I was gonna go. Fuck that, go there tomorrow because you'll be over here whenever you go to cash that check at Advanced Financial. Yeah, that's true. Okay. I guess I'll do that then. I will go to Advanced Financial tomorrow and I'll go to the grocery store and I'll get myself some motherfucking milk. <laughs> You're so determined. I am. I don't have this determination though. Like, for the most part. I just feel like lost in myself. But I, this happens a lot where I just, it's like I'd rather be lost in myself than like living in the world. <laughs> Is that selfish? I guess it's like I am sort of choosing my illness. I'm choosing not to like be part of the world. Is that wrong? Because I honestly don't think it's wrong. To want to live in this other world. I mean, it's understandable. This world fucking sucks, baby. <laughs> it really does. Okay, one more minute. That was 30 seconds of nothing. It's like, watch me drink my coffee vortex. See, I'm so tempted to just like go buy shit. <laughs> You're always tempted to go buy shit. What are you talking about? I am. I'm at a stoplight. I knew this was gonna happen. So I left work early because I felt like shit. Um, I was having this stabbing pain and I knew it was gonna go away and eventually. 